Hey everyone, Doug at Convology, and in this follow-up to a video that I previously did, I'll link that up in the cards up above, we are going to take this homepage that we built for a food ordering site, and I'm going to apply Orderable, which is a online ordering platform that layers on top of WooCommerce to create function and a visual interface that's super mobile friendly, super just user friendly in general, and works great for anything that would be an order related business, whether it's food, services, or products. And it adds all sorts of features like layouts for products, product add-ons, order bumps, one page ordering, which is one of my favorite options here, we'll, we'll show in the demo, a floating cart widget, if you're time-based, limited time slots, different scheduling, if you're a consulting business, this is a fantastic plugin and I'm going to take you on a very quick and practical walkthrough for how you can rapidly implement this for your WooCommerce powered website. But before we do that, I want to just quickly show you what we're going to build to kind of tease you and get you to watch the rest of the video, right? That's how it works. So we're gonna build this product front-end interface that functions really awesome. When you select a product that you want to buy, you'll be given the options to choose different settings, different toppings, whatever it's going to be for your product, you can set them and then add them to your cart. We're gonna show you how to do an order bump, how to customize that. I'm gonna show you all that in the video. So let's dive in. Okay, so there's a lot of settings in orderable, but I first just want to give you a just quick run through uh, some of the most important ones. This is not going to be a comprehensive overview of these settings. I think Orderable has done a great job of doing a walkthrough of all of that on their official website, which I showed you. So for this, we're gonna focus more on the practical implementation, showing the tool in practice, and you can decide whether or not you wanna dig in more on the official site to find these settings. But uh, suffice it to say, here is just your basic ability to add storefront hours and uh, time zone. You can update whether you do delivery and pickup. Again, a lot of this is geared towards a site that takes orders, whether it be a local site or a service or local service business. However, you can use this, and I'm gonna show you this, you can use this if you're uh, an online service provider. Uh, even if you sell courses, there are ways to take orderable and the great interface they've built uh, and implement that for you. Uh, but for this, these are just where you edit all those settings. You can add holidays, service hours, pre-ordering options, etc. There's also the ability to add tipping, um, tip options, things like that, uh, as well as some basic styling. So you can add your brand color. You can add a button style that suits uh, your theme. So if you want to go rounded or squared. And then there's this uh, really neat section down here at the bottom called mini cart settings and you can turn on a mini cart and for example put it in the bottom right and this will give you the ability to have on any page of your site a little like cart icon that when somebody clicks on it they can see what's in their cart this works really well for a site that uh, does more complex ordering like let's say that you I don't know going with the whole food theme if you sell pizzas and burgers and things like that you having that little cart icon always present uh, particularly on a mobile device is super helpful Okay, so next let's look at how to start putting things together in Ordable. On the left-hand side here in our main WordPress navigation, we have a live order view. That's like if you have something that's going to, or someone that's going to monitor orders as they come in, you have the layout builder and the product add-ons builder. I like to start with product add-ons. And for this uh, first illustration of how this works, I want to add a new product add-ons and let's go with the food theme. Let's say that you're a local restaurant, but I want you to put your business model or your business type in the shoes of what I'm doing. So if you sell flowers, if you sell artwork, you know, whatever it might be, whatever you sell, just think about that as we build this. So this is going to be what products, or what we're going to title this is what products these add-ons apply to. So I like to approach it like, okay, the add-ons that I'm making here are my burger add-ons. And then I'm going to add my first field. And I'm going to edit the field by clicking on it and this is the type of field that it's going to be. It's going to be a dropdown, a checkbox, or a radio. These are pretty self-explanatory if you're not familiar with checkboxes and radio. A checkbox means they can select multiple and a radio means they can select one. I think if I were to give some feedback, I would specify that in here in the interface. So let's go ahead and start with a dropdown. And let's say this will be uh, choose your meat. And we'll say, yes, it's required. And we'll start adding options. So if we're telling the person to choose their meat, let's have the first one be a single patty. Let's add this one be a double meat. We'll make this one be a triple stack. And maybe the last one will be something like 
quad mean? And we can say, well, a single patty is no additional because remember, these are add-ons. So think of the pricing here as add-on pricing. So we're going to take our base product in WooCommerce and add these on. So maybe if we want to add an additional patty, it's 99 cents. If we want to add two additional patties, $1.99 and $2.99 if we want to do a quadruple meat sandwich. And we're going to have none of these be selected by default. We're going to make them choose what they want. Let's add another field now and let's click into this one. And we did drop down, so let's do a checkbox next. And let's call these, um, let's call these toppings. And we won't make this one required because people can check it if they want. And if they don't want it, they won't check it. And we'll do things like lettuce. And we can make the price be zero. I don't think we'll do pricing for any of these. It'll just be like an add-on. Uh, tomato, we'll do onion, uh, pickle. We'll stop there. Now the next one we'll add is something like, I mean, let's do radio and let's just say, choose your sauce. And let's pretend they can only have one sauce on their burger and let's do ketchup, mustard, or barbecue. Ketchup, and we'll have zero as the price there. Mustard, that'll be zero. We won't charge for any sauce, BBQ. Great, so now we have, let's put zeros here. Now we have our, let's call it three add-ons for our burgers. Now we need to scroll down to the bottom because we've done all of our different add-on types and we need to add a condition so that these variables only apply to burgers. So for that, we're going to, instead of choosing a specific product, and we could, by the way, this could be a very specific product that these add-ons apply to, or we can keep it broad and say for any burger, and I come in here to the categories and I start typing burger, this is what's going to apply. And these are just product categories. So in WooCommerce, you can set categories for different products. I have ones like burger, pizza. I think I made one for like courses and consulting because we're going to go over that next. So great, that's my condition. It has to be a burger and then it'll give you all of these options. So let's go ahead and publish our burger add-ons. Now in the layout builder section, we're going to add different layouts for our products that we're selling. So think of this like creating the orderable product interface. So we'll click add new and then we will make burgers. And again, you can title this whatever you want, um, but I'll call it burgers, it's easy to see. Uh, but this is what really matters. We choose what categories we're choosing uh, for this display, and we're gonna go with burgers because that's what I've made my add-ons for. I like the list view, I think it works the best. And then sections, we'll do no, no titles or tabs, but let's say that you were checking multiple categories here, like burgers, desserts, and pizza. Well, then maybe I would want to include top tabs so that people would see, okay, here's my list of burgers, here's my desserts, and so on. It just gives sections different titles. Uh, images, I think, is good. Shows product images. Uh, and then I like the clickable card so that no matter where they click in the card, it will add the product to their cart or let them start customizing. Now, down below, this is going to give you a somewhat unstyled layout. And I say unstyled because this is going to, on the front end, not here, but on the front end, this is going to pull your theme styling. So if you're using Thrive Theme Builder, it's going to pull the typography and theme info. If you're using Cadence, which works really well with Orderable, it's going to pull the Cadence theme styling. So this right here is what I would call base stylization, whatever is the default style sheet for the plugin. Uh, but it gives you a general idea of, okay, this is what a list looks like. And if we did grid, that's what a grid looks like. I find it looks very different because my, my fonts are so much bigger but you get the idea. But I like list particularly for food. So we'll go with a list uh, product interface and then we'll click publish. Now that that's published, I wanna go back to the layout builder where I'm going to see a short code that I'm going to copy. And now I'm going to go to a page on my site. In this case, this is that same uh, order site that we created that homepage for in my previous video. And I'm going to add text right onto the page and I'm gonna drop it there and I'm going to paste in that short code. I'll center it just because, and I'll click save. And now let's preview. And by the way, this is in Thrive Architect. So I'm showing you that this works in Thrive Architect for a site built in Thrive Theme Builder. Um, let's see what that take. let's see what that looks like. This is what it looks like in Thrive Theme Builder with my basic styling. You can see it brought in my font choices uh, and, and my brand color that I set in the back end of orderable. This is what that looks like. So now we have our basic burger info, and this is pulling, by the way, strictly from WooCommerce. In WooCommerce, I have a hot burger, a beef burger, a super bacon, and these descriptions here are pulled from WooCommerce as well, along with this pricing, including these discounts. So this is just like a front-end interface, 
layered on top of WooCommerce, but it's going to add some functionality unique to orderable. So let's say I wanted the beef burger and I clicked select. You now see this interface that slides in from the right and this is orderable. So as you can remember, we said, choose your meat. We gave them the option for a single patty, which is nothing or double meat, etc. So let's say I wanted a triple stack, right? It updated my price to 1098. Let's say I wanted lettuce, tomato, no onion, but pickle. Again, none of those had a price associated, so it didn't change my pricing. And same with my ketchup. Let's say I wanted ketchup uh, and mustard. You'll notice that it actually, because we chose radio, only lets me choose one. So let's go with uh, ketchup and then click add. You can see here that has added it to my cart and it has added my beef burger with my triple stack and the price increase, the toppings, lettuce, tomato, pickle, and choosing your sauce, ketchup. Now this is when I want you to again, put your business in this place. Let's say you sold art. Maybe this was a canvas print instead of a digital print. Maybe this was a framed print. Maybe this was, again, this is my lack of knowledge of art, but imagine there were different types of add-ons that somebody could choose for artwork. And you could list your products with these variations and these price add-ons so that somebody could choose how they want that artwork delivered. Maybe this was a course. Maybe this was a Thrive Theme Builder course, and this was an hour of consulting uh, for them to that they could add on to that course as well. So if you buy the course, you get an hour of consulting. Or maybe it's you can buy just the course and you can add on access to the community for an additional $99 uh, one-time fee. So put your business in that place and think about it as we jump back here to the product add-ons. If I added more product add-ons, for example, let's say these could be course uh, add-ons and you could start adding on, let's say this was my, I don't know, let's call this a community upgrade. And we can say, let's do the checkbox and let's add only one option and community access. And let's give it a price of $99 one time. And if somebody were to click to buy the course again through WooCommerce, this would be an option that swings in. It would say, oh, you're buying access to the Thrive Theme Builder course with community access for $99. So again, these are some of those ideas that I think are really intriguing with the interface here, rather than having somebody just go into something like a WooCommerce product page. I'm a big fan of making those checkout experiences a little more unique. Now back here on the uh, product interface, I did want to point out there is that shopping cart in the bottom left. That's where we chose it to be. It could have been bottom right, wherever. So if I click on that, no matter where I'm at on my site, it swings open my menu and it remembers what I selected for my products. And again, this is fully functional. I can add two of these, one of these, I can remove this from my cart and then I can proceed to checkout. Now here's the default checkout page. I'm going to emphasize default because I've done literally nothing to it except customized my checkout template in Thrive Theme Builder, which is entirely for WooCommerce. So chances are, if you're a Thrive Theme Builder WooCommerce user, you already have this page customized. What I want to point out though, are the really nice details and interface layered on by orderable. You can see again, we have the product that we purchased with the different add-ons for that product, right? And these are our words that we chose, choose your meat, toppings, uh, choose your sauce. And then it just nicely subtotals those right here. Based on our tip settings, we had the ability to add a custom tip. I could put like 199, click apply. And you can see here it added it really nicely. That would be it. So this kind of even out of the box is a really nice checkout experience that is going to layer on top of WooCommerce and be totally customizable. However, you and your installation and setup of WooCommerce are set up to be. Now, one last thing I wanted to show you was kind of like the ups, they call it the upsell option. Um, I thought this was really neat. And I thought it was, I think, really helpful for someone that's going to use this for just about any ordering add-on type product setup that you have. So to add these upsells to our product checkout experience, what we want to do is come down to product data. And in WooCommerce, there's a section under product data called linked products. And we want to find cross sales. Now, I know I said the word upsells, but what you're going to do is put it under cross sales because we're cross selling from a burger to 
a, I don't know, like a dessert. So in this case, let's type in Sunday. And this is another product that's already in WooCommerce. So search for your products that you would want to cross sell. And I'll choose, okay, ice cream Sunday. And then I'll update this page. Now, if we come back to the product page where I want to check out with a beef burger, I'll click select on the beef burger. Let's just go ahead and choose our option. And oh, by the way, because you see community access here, this is because I did not set a uh, rule or a conditional for that community access to only be on courses. So we're seeing it on burgers where it makes no sense. Let's just choose some options here and click add to cart. And there we go, right at the bottom, you may also like. So there's our cross sell, there's our ice cream sundae. So if we wanted to, we could choose, yes, I would like an ice cream sundae. And now it's going to give us the customization options for that ice cream sundae. Now, community access makes no sense at all. So let's really quick go and I wanna show you one more feature of the product add-ons. So let's add some new add-ons. I'll call these Sunday add-ons. We'll add a field here and we will choose, uh, let's go with our check box and we'll just call these toppings. And then I'm going to click add an option and I'm gonna change this visual section here. So let's say we want sprinkles. Under visual, I can choose image, click this little image icon, which opens my WordPress media library and I can choose my image of sprinkles and you'll see it's kind of appeared there and I could say, oh, sprinkles are 25 cents. I could add another option. I could say marshmallows and I can choose an image. For those, we'll choose our marshmallow image. And let's say that was our uh, offerings for our Sunday. Let me go ahead and publish that. Give this a good old refresh. Open up our cart. I've got a beef burger in there. Sure, I'd like to add an ice cream Sunday. And now it's asking me what toppings I would like on that Sunday. And that's a really neat interface. I think it skipped, uh, skipped having to go to another page. It was just great. We've added a, a Sunday to your order. It's gonna be 4 dollars Do you want sprinkles and marshmallows? I didn't put a price for marshmallows, but let's say I want sprinkles. You can see it adjusted my price and click add. And now I have a beef burger and an ice cream Sunday, and I can go ahead and proceed to my checkout. And there we go. It has both of those items in the cart. And what's really kind of neat, I just want to point out, it kept my $1.99 tip that I put in previously when I came in to check out. I thought that was a cool touch. So that's orderable. I think it's a great addition to your WooCommerce tech stack. If you are selling a product or a service that functions on add-ons, it functions on product customization. Again, I think artwork, all those types of businesses that would configure having add-ons, even, even courses, even consulting, SEO work. Another great example would be content writing. I think that Orderable does a great job at accommodating that type of business. So again, if you're interested in picking up Orderable, you can get that at convology.com slash Orderable. But that'll do it for me in this tutorial. I'm Doug at Convology, and I'll see you in the next video.